Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 89th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. All right, now to start off, the iOS 5.1.1 Untethered Jailbreak was released today. For those of you that don't know, it covers the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 4, the iPhone 3GS, the iPod Touch 4th and 3rd generation, as well as the new 3rd generation iPad, the iPad 2, and the original iPad. So yes, this is the first Untethered Jailbreak for the third generation iPad, and it's also the second jailbreak for the iPhone 4S. So some pretty monumental stuff today in the world of jailbreaking. And it was released by the Chronic Dev team in the form of Absinthe. Now it's an extremely easy utility. The hardest part is actually waiting for it to jailbreak. So I'll have a link to the jailbreak tutorial down below in the more info. And if you're already jailbroken with a tethered jailbreak on an iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPod Touch 4th or third generation, or the original iPad, then you can open up Video, let it refresh and search for Rocky Raccoon and install that. And once it's installed, it will essentially convert your tethered jailbreak into an untethered jailbreak. Again, if you already have Cydia and if your jailbreak is indeed a tethered jailbreak on one of the devices I just mentioned. Also, Muscle Nerd from the iPhone dev team said a while back that they would be updating Red Snow to incorporate the untethered jailbreak for iOS 5.1.1 shortly after Absinthe was released. Now, they have yet to do that, but once they do push out the updated version of Red Snow, that will be a great alternative for those of you who are having issues with Absinthe, whether it's simply because it's not working or because it isn't identifying your device properly. And while it's kind of a moot point since the iOS 5.1.1 untethered jailbreak has been released. I will include links to all of the untethered jailbreak updates down below in the more info in case any of you are interested. All right, moving on, I just wanted to briefly discuss this next story. There will be more on it on the actual article itself. Now, Mac Rumors has a source within Apple's supply channels who claims to have sent them pictures of a next generation iPod Touch front panel. Now, this front panel is significantly different of that used on the current iPod Touch because A, it's bigger, and B, the screen is more elongated on it, so it's stretched out vertically as opposed to just the standard 3.5 inch screen. And the supplier claims that this front panel has a cutout for a screen that's approximately 4.1 inches diagonally. And the supplier also sent them pictures of alleged next generation iPhone minor parts that would suggest a significant redesign in the upcoming model. Moving on, Apple's senior vice president of industrial design was knighted the other day on the 23rd. And while he has received numerous rewards in the past for various designs, they all pale in comparison to his recent ascension to the status of knighthood. Shortly after the ceremony, the Telegraph got an exclusive interview with Jonathan Ive. And towards the end of the interview, the question came up of which design he feels to be the most memorable. And in response to that, he said what he's working on right now and what Apple has planned for the future. So this is just more evidence that Apple will continue to innovate in the foreseeable future. However, he is somewhat biased because he does work for the company. All right, moving on, as noted by Wired in a recent interview, IBM's chief information officer revealed that while the company has a bring your own device policy to work, they strictly prohibit the use of certain cloud-based features, including iCloud, Dropbox, and especially Siri. Now, the main reason for that is because they don't want their employees to accidentally leak confidential information pertaining to the company or their upcoming ventures. Next, 9to5Mac has reportedly discovered a file for Safari inside of the latest developer preview of OSX Mountain Lion that would hint to the platform receiving some sort of Siri dictation functionality. Now, while references to full-blown Siri haven't been discovered and only one reference to Siri dictation has been discovered, this could very well mean that Apple is at least looking into getting Siri dictation running on the Mac and hopefully a full-blown personal assistant feature sometime within the near future. And what's interesting is that inside the file it says the hotkeys to actually activate the function are to hold down both command keys on the keyboard. And that's definitely a great solution considering it would be impractical to put a physical key on the keyboard. Now it's not confirmed by any means and hopefully we'll know more at this year's WWDC. Now to conclude this week's news, Blizzard Entertainment, the developers behind the increasingly popular StarCraft, Diablo, and World of Warcraft franchises announced that over 3.5 million copies of Diablo 3 were sold prior to and on the game's release date. What's more is that figure doesn't even include the more than 1.2 million customers who received Diablo 3 as part of the World of Warcraft annual pass promotion. So over 4.7 million gamers were prepared to take on the fictitious demons of hell in Diablo 3 from day one. And with the release of Diablo 3, Blizzard implemented an online connection requirement, and most players attribute that to the constant server crashes that were going on when the game launched and shortly thereafter. However, from a developer's standpoint, the new implementation will 
definitely cut down on piracy and it will be great for them. All right, now I hope you guys liked this video. Please be sure to rate it up if you did and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos. For the question of the day, what do you guys think about the iOS 5.1.1 untethered jailbreak? Do you plan on upgrading to 5.1.1 from a lower firmware? Have you already upgraded? Are you already jailbroken on 5.1.1? Whatever it may be, leave your responses down below or on best tech info. And as always, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google Plus to stay updated more often. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.